Hi, Harmony Seekers. Today, we're going to deep diving into the final part of The Art of Mindful Communication in Relationships. Just like a huge ocean stretching out as far as the eye can see, filled with hidden treasures just waiting to be discovered beneath its surface. We're diving deep into this fascinating final chapter that may seem simple at first, but hold profound depths. The depths hold so many answers, revelations, and insights that can truly change the way we communicate, love, understand, and support our partners. When we shine a light on them, amazing things can happen. Just stay with me until the end, because sometimes the most valuable things are found in unexplored deeper places. I am certain that you'll have some amazing insights that could really light up your love life. In our modern world, where we often speak through screens and not face to face, we find ourselves in a digital maze. It's an age where our words fly faster than our thoughts, and sometimes just one misunderstood message can spark an unintended conflict. Misunderstandings are often just a text away. Remember Liam and Clara? Let me share their story with you again. Three years ago, when they still dating, Clara is an overseas student finishing off her final year as a dentist. It was a school holiday, and Clara took a holiday back to her country to visit her family. In those couple of weeks, Clara and Liam lived far apart. Their communication is over the internet via their phones. Their hearts connected, but their words often did not. Once, Clara sent a text to Liam after a tiresome day, I'm tired. Talk tomorrow? Liam, reading the words but not the exhaustion behind them, felt dismissed. He thought, does she no longer want to talk to me? What followed were hours of silence and growing assumptions. Visualize digital communication as a grand painting. When we converse in person, we paint with a plethora of colors, expressing emotions, tones, and nuances. But in the realm of screens, often, our palette is limited. Texts lack the shades of voice tone, facial expressions, and body language. Without these colors and shades, the beautiful picture we intend to paint can be misconstrued, looking starkly different to the other. Think of the last time you misinterpreted a text or an email, or when your words, devoid of tone, were misunderstood by someone you care about. Can you recall the feeling? The unease? Digital dialogues, despite their challenges, have a beauty of their own. They cross borders, bridge distances, and often keep love alive. But how do we navigate these dialogues to avoid pitfalls? How do we ensure the message sent is the message received? Be mindful of the words you choose. They are the brushstrokes of your painting. When in doubt, I normally ask. Because a simple clarification can prevent hours, even days, of turmoil. Clara and Liam, realizing the constant misinterpretations, cultivated a unique digital ritual. They started sending voice notes, adding colors to their painting. The nuances in their voices, the laughter, the sighs, added the missing shades to their digital communication. No longer did Liam have to assume Clara's tone, because he could hear it. Do you have a ritual for your digital communication? Something that adds that personal touch, making the screen seem a little less distant? Clara and Liam's journey was no fairy tale. They faced their share of storms, but each digital misunderstanding was a lesson, a stepping stone. Through their unique ritual, not only did they bridge the digital gap, but they also deepened their connection. Can you imagine creating such a ritual with someone you love? A ritual that brings you closer in a digital age? In this age of swift digital communication, please remember every word has power. Use it wisely. And in the vast digital landscape, find your unique ritual. For in these rituals lie deeper connections and heartfelt conversations. There is an ancient wisdom saying that every heart has its own special place and every special place has its key. I think it's important to consider boundaries as more than just walls. 
They can be seen as sacred gates that encourage us to take a moment, knock, and patiently wait. It could be very funny when we think of that. But do you remember when you were a kid and you had this little box where you kept all your favorite things? Nobody could go in unless they understood how important it was. You know in our relationships, there are certain things that we hold close to our hearts. It's not that they're secrets, but they're just really special and important to us. I just wanted to share a little story with you. It's Clara and Liam again. They could talk for hours, chatting about dreams, goals, and sharing funny stories. But you know, Liam was always so curious about Clara's past relationships. It seemed like every time they had a peaceful conversation, he just had to bring it up and things would get all chaotic. Clara was feeling uncomfortable but couldn't express it. She didn't have anything to hide, but some parts of her past were really painful and personal. Clara was sitting outside, in their backyard, on a calm evening, gazing up at the stars. With tears in her eyes, she opened up about how these questions were making her feel so vulnerable. Liam, being aware of his mistake, reached out and held her hand, assuring her that he would respect the boundaries of her heart. What if relationships were like rivers? Their beauty is all about the way they flow, the incredible energy they have, and how full of life they are. Boundaries in a relationship are kind of like the banks of a river. They help guide the flow without suffocating it. Just something to ponder. If we didn't have banks, the river would just go all over the place, causing a big mess and lots of chaos. Can you recall a time when someone crossed a line and invaded your emotional space? How did it feel? I happened to me before. I was feeling like a river overflow and floods its banks. It's really disorienting and unsettling. But you know, when we acknowledge and respect these boundaries, it really helps create a sense of harmony. Well, let's talk about understanding. You know, it's important to realize that each person has their own little sanctuary inside them. It's where they keep special memories and feelings. It's totally fine if not everything is meant to be shared. Do you have a special place that you consider your sanctuary? What does it protect? What kind of emotions are associated with it? Also, let's talk about communication. If something is making you feel uncomfortable, don't hesitate to speak up about it. And when your partner tells you their boundary, really listen with your heart, not just your ears. Yes, it's all about trust. They're not trying to exclude you. They're actually giving you a chance to understand them better. And finally, let's not forget about mutual respect. Yes, it's really important to respect and honor the boundaries that are communicated. If you keep crossing them over and over again, it can really mess with the emotions and put a strain on your bond. So what kind of boundaries have you and your partner established in your relationship? Have you ever accidentally crossed a boundary before? Take a moment to think about it. Surprises in relationships can be amazing, but there's one surprise we definitely want to steer clear of accidentally hurting our loved ones by not respecting their boundaries. I've got a great practice for you to try out. Why don't you and your partner sit together and hold hands? Take a moment to share a boundary that you'd like each other to respect. Don't worry, you won't judge or ask for any explanations. Just listen, accept, and make a commitment to honor it. After practicing this method, Liam and Clara's relationship really took off. They really started to understand and appreciate each other's boundaries, and it made their bond stronger than ever. You know, Liam had this realization that it's totally okay for some doors to stay closed. Love isn't just about knowing every single detail of the past. It's about creating a wonderful future together. Boundaries aren't like walls that block us off. They're more like the natural shape of our emotions and feelings. When we respect each other, our journey together becomes so much better and more meaningful. I just wanted to remind you that in the big forest of relationships, every tree has its own space, every bird has its own song, and every heart has its own special place. Each and every one of us 
is like a mix of our experiences, how we were raised, and the culture we grew up in. It's like a huge symphony, you know? Every culture is like a unique note, and every language is like its own special melody. When two notes come together, they can either make a beautiful harmony or create some discord. But you know, even in the midst of all the chaos, there's always a lesson to be learned, a harmony path just waiting for us to find it. I want to tell you this really cool story about Clara and Liam again. Clara was such a lively Asian woman. And Liam? Well, he is a Western man. Their love story was like something straight out of a modern fairy tale. So, they actually met online. And it all began when Clara doing research online about the country she is going to go to for studying soon. She joined the university forum and asked people and do research about the school. Liam is already a student of that school and is a member of the school forum. He is very active in answering other members' questions about this school and the life of an overseas student in general. But you know what? Those messages of questions and answers quickly turned into late-night conversations, and before they knew it, love had bloomed between them. But you know love isn't always about the good times. There were definitely moments when Clara's straightforwardness, which is just how things are back home for her and her family, clashed with Liam's Western temperament. Yeah, it was tough. They had misunderstandings, words got lost in translation, and there were cultural nuances that they both found hard to comprehend. But what really stays with me from their story is not so much the challenges they had to deal with, but rather how they managed to overcome them. Until when they meet in person, they invite each other to experience their culture through food and festivals. They need to put the ego and pride aside to try and experience the other person's culture and food. They realize that communication goes beyond just using words, thanks to these shared experiences. It's amazing how through eating the different types of food and attend different festivals allowed them to express their emotions and really understand each other, even when they couldn't rely on words. Their journey is like watching a dish being cooked. You know, cultural nuances are just like spices in a dish. Definitely. Every spice has its own unique flavor, and sometimes they can even surprise you with a little kick of heat. But when you blend it with care, patience, and understanding, you end up with a dish that's super tasty, full of flavor, and totally unique. The first thing to understand is that these differences aren't hurdles, but chances for growth. There are so many great opportunities out there to learn, grow, and make your life even better. Isn't it amazing to think about? It's so fascinating that two people can both see the moon, but have different names for it. But no matter what we call it, we can all agree that it has a universal romantic feeling, right? Another thing that's really important is to actively participate in each other's cultures is it could be anything like music, art, food, or festivals. Go deep, not just as someone watching, but as someone actively involved. But you know what? There's actually something even more basic. I just want to let you know that Whenever you come across a cultural misunderstanding, take a moment to pause and reflect on it. Instead of reacting, why not try asking questions to seek clarity? When we practice mindful communication, it helps us avoid misunderstandings and fosters mutual respect. Can you share a cultural or linguistic difference that you've encountered in your relationship? How did it make you feel? Can't you just think of it as a window to a whole new world instead of seeing it as a barrier? The story of Clara and Liam shows us that we can embrace our partner's world without giving up our own. It means creating a connection between two different worlds. It's all about putting in the effort to understand, learn, and respect. It's all about finding something we both connect on in the wide world of love. When couples start this journey, they realize that no matter the culture or language, we all share a common human experience. You know, it's really interesting how our joys, fears, dreams, and desires are all connected to each other. When I first heard their story, I came to a realization that in the grand symphony of love, every note counts, every melody holds importance. 
And when you play it with love and understanding, it just creates this amazing harmony that resonates throughout the entire universe. Let's talk about past issues in our relationships. You know, those pesky scars that just keep coming back? Let's explore this together. It's funny how these weeds in the garden of our hearts just keep coming back, no matter how many times we try to get rid of them. Yeah, you're right. Every gardener knows that if you want to completely get rid of a weed, you have to dig up its root. I myself have experienced that past issues can come back up even with just a small trigger if they haven't been healed. The human heart is both fragile and resilient. Have you ever had a situation where an old disagreement, argument, or mistake from the past came up again in the present? I want to tell you a story about Amanda and Anthony again. They're just like many of us, dealing with past issues that keeps coming back. Whenever Amanda reminds Anthony that he forgot to turn the lights off, she always uses that tone. Whenever Amanda used that tone, it would instantly remind Anthony of an argument they had four years ago. Even if the current disagreement was about something small, like leaving the lights on, that tone brought up old hurts again. It's like the past issues was always hanging around them, you know? It's like a shadow that just made their happy days a little bit darker. Anthony really wants to clear this old wound out of his mind. But it is not easy. He tried many times, but when it hit him in surprise, but default, he would react to it without thinking. He came and asked me for advice. Therefore, I came up with a special exercise and suggest them to try. So, they're going to write letters to their past selves. Yes, you heard me right. Writing letters to their past selves. They want to address that past issues that keeps coming up. So, basically, what they would do is write letters to their past selves for each other, read them out loud, and then burn them together. It's a way for them to let go and find closure. Can you believe how incredibly brave they were to do this? Are they willing to open up about their vulnerabilities and trust each other with them? What do you think happened? The letters acted like mirrors, showing the hurt and pain that they both felt and caused each other. When they read the letters out loud, it felt like they were experiencing those moments all over again. It was like they had a better understanding and empathy for each other than ever before. They burned it as a symbol of their mutual decision to move on, leaving their past wounds behind in the ashes. Past issues are kind of like echoes. Sometimes it's faint, sometimes it's loud, but it always comes from where something hits. Can you imagine being in a huge canyon? When you shout, your voice bounces back and forth, kind of like an echo. That's just how things have been in the past. But if we approach things with understanding and compassion, we can work towards minimizing those echoes until they fade away completely. Why do we keep getting haunted by past issues? Oh, I see. So, the reason why they signify unresolved emotions is because those memories aren't just memories. They're like intense emotions just waiting to be set free. And you know what? It's really important for us to see those things, not as obstacles, but as chances to learn and develop on a deeper level. Have you ever found yourself stuck in a never-ending loop, going back and forth in the same argument? Do you ever wonder if the issue we're dealing with right now is really important, or if it's just something that reminds us of something that happened before? I think if you want to find closure, you have to really listen. It's not just about hearing the words, but also understanding the emotions behind them. You have to be there to really get it, to feel it, to understand. And you know what? Healing really starts when we stop running away from the pain, and instead we start accepting the lessons it teaches us. If you were to write a letter like Amanda and Anthony, what would you tell your past self? What would it be filled with? Regret, understanding, forgiveness, or hope? I am absolutely certain that we have the ability to change our stories and make our relationships better. We can turn our disagreements into agreements. You know, 
It's never too late to work through the past to identify past issues, to heal, and to grow together. As we wrap up our time together, let's pause for a moment and think about the journey we've been on today. We've explored the complex world of mindful communication and relationships, from the subtle signals we send without words to the beautiful art of truly listening. Every time we speak, make a gesture, or even stay silent, we're actually inviting others to connect with us, to understand us, and to cherish the moment. But you know it's not only about understanding the person you love. It's all about understanding the special love that you both have, which grows stronger with every moment that goes by. Take your time and think about the methods that we discussed. Maybe you could try practicing active listening with your partner. It's a great way to really connect with them. And also, don't be afraid to speak up and express any needs or feelings you've been keeping to yourself. It takes courage but it can make a big difference in your relationship. As you start embracing these practices, just pay attention to the little changes and the magical moments that start happening in your relationship. As we come to the end of this final chapter in our journey, it brings to mind this beautiful old tree I know. It's got these amazing deep roots and branches that stretch out far and wide. Today, We've explored the different aspects of the art of mindful communication and relationships, understanding the various ways we connect with others. But you know, deep down, it all comes down to our emotions and mental well-being, the very core of who we are. In our upcoming episode, Navigating Emotions and Mental Well-Being Together, we're going to dive into the foundation that really helps our emotions, mental health, and relationships grow and thrive. We'll explore how our emotions and mental well-being play a crucial role in nurturing our connections. Let's find true harmony, not only with our partners, but also within ourselves, 